Hey, good morning guys. This is Sam from Education Hunt. Thanks for stopping by. This week I was posed a question from a teacher I admire. She wanted to know uh, if I were to use a platform to connect with students outside of class, which one would I use? I said, okay, cool. Um, she said, wait a minute. Like most things in life, there's a catch. There's a caveat. Uh, it had to be uh, intuitive. It had to be um, easy to access. And basically, it didn't need to be a pain in the butt to get it up and going. I said, cool. Give me a minute. And I'm back. And what I came up with is zoom it's a video conferencing tool before I dive in and show you what I like about zoom here's the, the disclaimer I am a Google guy I love it I love everything uh, that Google pumps out my go-to for uh, video conferencing is going to be Google Hangouts and I use uh, the on-air events I like everything about it however the catch the disclaimer um, I think that there's merit to looking at alternatives uh, to challenging the status quo uh, and certainly because Google works for me and Hangouts is great for me doesn't mean it's going to be great for everyone else there is merit at looking at alternatives and I think that is exactly what you have here with Zoom for some of you out there Zoom may even be a better fit than Google if it is use it I, I definitely think it's got a lot of potential the elevator pitch for uh, Zoom you can conference with up to 25 students at one time. You can chat and interact. You also have uh, web and video conferencing all for the grand total of free. So that's pretty awesome. Once you download the, um, the basic app, you're ready to go and you're ready to rock. Let me show you what it looks like. You'll get an option of uh, sharing with video or without video. You can schedule meetings similar to Google Events, and you can uh, send out links or you can join existing conferences with a code. What I really enjoy about this is that you're given a number of uh, ways to share what you're looking at on your computer. So it could be the desktop or whiteboard, they have an iPhone and iPad app that's pretty rich and uh, you have the option of sharing out individual tabs for us let's go by sharing the entire screen and when you go through here you can manage your participants as they join you have a uh, setup where you can message one or you can message all so that is going to be a very rich I think platform, especially if you're going to work on discussing uh, content outside of the classroom, so you can have those sidebar conversations or you can have it uh, with the class as a, as a whole. Students have that same option where they can ask you an individual question without the group seeing the, uh, the question. You can make notes and go from there. Also neat uh, is that um, in your recording, uh, you have an option of uh, clicking the record button so you can record that uh, session. And when it's done, you'll have it in an MP4 format. What you do with it is up to you. You could upload it to YouTube or you can hold on to it or make it accessible to everybody. Here's my 30 second lesson plan. Something like this screams remediation or reinforcement. Uh, so as a teacher, as an administrator, as an educator, we all have life outside of school. We have families, we have children, and time is the one thing that we will never get back or get more of. So it is, it should be your most precious resource. Uh, platforms like Zoom or Google uh, with on-air and events and Hangouts uh, honor, I think, time. So that way you can still have remediation and uh, not lose out on time. So my 30 second lesson plan would be around uh, remediation of a benchmark and it would be after school. And so as opposed to sitting in my classroom, staying at school until five or six o'clock, I would go home, greet my family, 
greet my children, do what I need to do, and then schedule that meeting in the evening for anyone that needs that uh, extra bit of help. What's awesome is you can have it super specific by your benchmark or by your uh, standard that you're looking at for that day so it's focused and you go through with those students who need that extra specific help. What's nice is with the record feature simply uh, share out at the end. So if you have a student who's unable to attend, that's okay. You make sure that they then get it in their hands uh, when you return to school the next day or you post it on your web page or you post it on your YouTube channel. It's there for consumption. The important part is once you do it, bang, you got it right there and it's not going anywhere. It's uh, essentially once you do it, it's done and making sure that they have access to it. I think there's a lot of uh, power in that practice making sure that we capture the work that we do. Zoom does that. Just a reminder, if you haven't done so already, you like what we're doing with Education Hunt, sign up, tell a friend, make sure that they sign up, visit our profile, and all they need to do is drop in their email. You can send me a, an email at igniteduval at gmail.com. I'm very quick to respond. Or make sure you follow me on Twitter, igniteduval at greater than a thousand. We pump out resources daily. Uh, high impact stuff on the regular. Also, uh, a new experiment. I want to see what happens when we get teachers together. Uh, Education Hunt has been pretty awesome. It's to an extent a one way conversation. So, what I'm wanted to do is uh, create a community outside of our schools, a national community, and I want to do it using Slack. So, if you want to invite to join Education Hunt on Slack, and have a communication with a thousand other education, uh, a thousand other teachers. Just send me your email address, and I'll make sure to add you to the channel. The catch, the caveat: you say, "Hey Sam, I have no idea what Slack is, or why I should even know what it is." Perfect. You need to check back next week, and we'll dive into what Slack can do for you and your school. Until next time, thanks for stopping by.